In this video, you'll learn how admins can maintain governance and security in your workspace. As always, we recommend that you follow along in your own workspace so you can get up to speed quickly with managing your security and permissions. Let's start by figuring out how team members access the platform and what they can do in your workspace. Securing your workspace is incredibly important, and it should be at the top of your list of things for admins to do. The best place to start is security and permissions settings. On this page, you'll see security at the top, along with a few options to consider depending on your ClickUp plan. The first option available on all plans is two-factor authentication. Here you can choose to require it to ensure security and prevent unauthorized access. If you choose to immediately require two-factor authentication, your team will be logged out and they will need to establish their own two-factor authentication option found in their user settings. The next security settings you can configure are single sign-on and session management and duration. These are enterprise plan features that give you the added security for your team. With single sign-on or SSO, you can select one of the SSO identity providers and require SSO in order to seamlessly log in to ClickUp. Next, with session management, you can enforce session limits, including how long your team can be logged in, as well as how long they can be idle and click up with no activity. If you set anything up here, users will be logged out and prompted to log back in. As a best practice, enable both two-factor authentication and single sign-on to tighten your workspace security. If you don't have single sign-on or the enterprise plan, be sure to enable two-factor authentication at a minimum to secure your workspace and mitigate risk. And as an admin, it's best practice to document all of your decisions and ways to log in in a doc. Let's say you're an admin and your team has both of these settings enabled. Be sure to document this in your SOPs and include these into your processes when you're onboarding new users to let them know what they'll need to do in order to log in. Let's talk about custom permissions next. In ClickUp, not everyone will need to do certain things like create custom fields, custom statuses, views, or even things like creating spaces in the hierarchy. Custom permissions allow you to have granular control over the level of access and permissions for every role in your workspace. By configuring these permissions for each role, you can allow or restrict specific actions that people can perform in ClickUp. At the top, you'll see the actions and then each role and the permitted actions that that role can take. You'll also notice at the top there is a new role button. Something to note here is that this will only show up for workspace owners unless they've enabled the ability to create custom roles. This is where you can create a custom role specifically for Business Plus and Enterprise Plan users. Custom roles allow you to create a fully customizable role that has additional permissions that others don't come with by default. If there's an in-between type of a role, a role with very limited permissions, or even a role that needs everything and more, you can add a new one here. Let's say we need a role like a super admin with access to more than what admins have by default. All we need to do is name the role, select the default permissions for admin here, and create it. Since we're creating a super admin role, you can toggle everything to the on position such as the ability to create a custom role like the one we're creating now. Let's talk about some best practices for custom permissions to help you further secure your workspace. First, turn off edit statuses for members so you can keep your statuses limited and simple. Only let team leaders or process owners, typically admins or custom in between roles, to be able to edit statuses. This will keep your workflows so much cleaner. Let's say one of your designers finishes a design that's now ready for review. If they were able to edit statuses and then added or created their own status without consulting the team or the team lead, it could throw off the team in the workflow and create more confusion. Instead, if there was a ready for review status, they could just select that one and then tag the team lead or process owner that the design is ready for review. Ensuring that your leads or process owners are the main contacts who can edit statuses will prevent any confusion on that task, and everybody will know what's needed to move the task forward to completion. Next, similar to statuses, leave the management of custom fields and access to custom field manager to team leaders or process owners. Remember, custom fields trickle down with the waterfall effect that was mentioned in the first course. If you have a custom field at the space level, 
it'll be available on all locations within that space. So if you let everyone create custom fields, you open it up for members to create custom fields by mistake or even in the wrong locations. Let's say your marketing campaign managers have custom fields for tracking campaign metrics like budget, target audience, and conversion rates. If every team member could create custom fields, you might end up with duplicate or incorrectly placed fields, causing a lot of confusion and clutter. By restricting this ability to team leaders or process owners, you ensure that the relevant and correctly placed custom fields are created, maintaining a clean and organized workspace. Also, consider limiting the ability to create views that are shared with others in locations. Keep in mind that members will always be able to create their own private views. However, if you limit their ability to create views, they won't be able to create any public views for the rest of the workspace to see. Imagine your product development team is working on a new feature rollout. If every team member could create public views, you might end up with the multiple versions of the project timeline leading to miscommunication and delays. So limiting the ability to create views will keep your views relevant and clean for you and all other users in your workspace. The last best practice is to allow people to delete items only if they were created by them. If a team member accidentally deletes an important task or project by mistake, that can cause a major disruption to your work or your team's progress. So go ahead and select only if created here to prevent this. This way, if your team leads or process owners are creating most of the important work, other members will not be able to delete it. Imagine your engineering team is working on a critical software release. If a team member who didn't create the release plan accidentally deletes it, the entire project timeline could be thrown off, causing extra delays and additional work. By restricting deletion rights, you ensure that only the original creator or designated leads can delete such crucial documents, maintaining the integrity of your project schedule. The last thing to talk about today is advanced permissions. Advanced permissions noted here are mostly for admins. However, they're typically associated with sharing workspace information. You can review these and determine what's best for your workspace. However, let's dive into two specific options, allowing admins to manage private spaces and custom fields. Allowing admins to manage private spaces ensures that you're able to access all spaces and transfer ownership of them if people ever leave your company. Same thing goes with private custom fields. This way, if someone leaves your company and is deactivated, you can still access the space or the custom field and transfer ownership of it as needed. So as a best practice, be sure to enable these two options to allow admins to manage private spaces and custom fields, so admins will be able to manage their workspace data effectively. In this video, we explored important features and best practices for securing your workspace including security settings, as well as custom and advanced permissions. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and try it out for yourself and manage security and permission settings today. We'll see you in the next one.